Okay, welcome back for this last uh, session on logic and reasoning and deduction. Uh, we have had a very whirlwind tour of logic, uh, but hopefully you will have time to go over things in more detail. So, just to do a very quick recap, uh, there were two notions we started with. One was the notion of entailment. If you remember, we said that a knowledge base entails a sentence alpha and the meaning of this sentence is that if the knowledge base is true, then alpha must be necessarily true. So, that was the notion of entailment. We also looked at the notion of proof, which we had a different notation here and we said that uh, alpha is provable given the knowledge base, that if the knowledge base is given to you, some reasoning algorithm will generate alpha. So, there is an algorithm tied to proof, whereas entailment is a semantic property. It simply says that if the knowledge base is true, then alpha is true essentially, but semantics is not easily accessible to us. In proportional logic, you can always construct truth tables and things like that, but in, when you talk about first order logics, it is not easy to work with semantics. So, there are proof methods which are closer to uh, semantic methods, uh, which are called like model checking and so on, but we will not get into that. We are focusing on proof methods which are syntactic in nature, which means we have a proof procedure. You have a procedure, you have an algorithm which can produce the sentence alpha. And then we had talked about notions of soundness and completeness. We had said that a logic is sound. When we say a logic, we also mean a proof procedure now is sound if anything it produces happens to be true. So, soundness goes from right to left. If alpha is provable, then alpha, alpha must be true, which means our logic machine can prove only true statements. The other direction was completeness. It says that if alpha is true or alpha is entailed, which is a semantic property, then our proof process will procedure will find it essentially. So, our logic is complete. Anything that is true can be proven in our system essentially. So, we started looking at logic, then we looked at forward chaining and then we looked at backward chaining and we saw examples of both and we saw that prolog is a language which does backward chaining. Today, we want to end on a note which cautions us about these two methods. So, let us see what, what I am talking about here. So, let us look at a not so easy problem. When you are looking at this problem, you must also remember that logic is formal in nature, that we work with symbols, we manipulate symbols. The meaning behind those symbols is only in our heads, at least as of now. I did say that for first order logic, you can create the semantics by creating an interpretation and so on, but let us not get into that here. So, let us look at, look at a problem which is not so straightforward to uh, tackle. So, in the list notation that was introduced by Charniak and McDermott, we have a very small knowledge base. It has got four sentences. Remember that in the list notation, the first element in the list is a predicate. So, O is a predicate and it has two arguments A and B. In the second sentence, again O is a predicate and it has two arguments B and C. Then we have the not, of course, that we are familiar with and it says that MA, whatever the formula is, is false essentially or not of that formula is true. That formula itself has a predicate called M, which takes one argument A essentially. So, that is a third sentence in our, in our knowledge base. The fourth sentence simply says that there is something C, which is an M. So, you can read this as some relation between some predicate which relates A and B and B and C, O is a relation, it is a binary predicate 
it takes two arguments. M is a unary predicate, it takes one argument and the last sentence says that C is an M and the third sentence says that A is not an M. Basically. So, given these four statements, what are we talking about? When we use variable names like count is equal to count plus 1 in any programming language like C or something like that. The fact that we have used the variable name count is meaningful only to us as far as the uh, interpreter or the compiler is concerned, it has no meaning at all, it simply is just a variable. So, here also I have taken uh, deliberately I have taken uh, predicate names and, and argument names which are not meaningful. Uh, because that is how logic works, logic works only with the form, it does not work with meaning. So, if we have a knowledge base like this, which has got only four statements or four sentences, what is it talking about? What is the semantics of these four statements? We cannot say, it is it is just a set of four statements. Whether they are true or not will depend upon what is it they are talking about, what is the domain they are describing and if those particular facts that we are talking about are true in that domain or not. So, that truth value comes later, the meaning comes later, but the knowledge base is just a set of sentences in the language which we have defined as the first order language and this one does not even have any quantifiers here. So, let us look at uh, this process, you know, try to get behind the fact, try to digest the fact that logic is formal, that the meaning is not embedded in the knowledge base at all essentially. So, as I said, there is a notion of an interpretation, we use a symbol I for interpretation, in which we choose a domain. We will not go into the details and we choose a mapping. So, if we choose for example, numbers as domain, uh, then uh, we can say the successor function means this, the sum uh, function means this, uh, the greater than predicate means this. So, all that is given to us by mapping essentially. Constants will map to elements in the domain variables are variables which can map to anything in the domain. Uh, statements which have universally quantified variables uh, will apply to all elements in the domain, existentially quantified statements will apply to some elements in the domain and therefore, we can talk about what are we saying, what are we talking about, what is the meaning of our sentences and also whether a knowledge base is true or not essentially. So, if we pick a domain and an interpretation which makes a knowledge base true, then we are said to have a model for the knowledge base. Okay. So, I will just mention the, the term here, but we will not go into the details. A model for a knowledge base is an interpretation. which means you have to choose a domain and you have to choose, choose the meaning of the predicates and the constants. So, for example, Socrates is a constant and if you are choosing the domain of people, then we are referring to one particular element in the domain. If we talk of Donald Trump, we are talking about one particular element in the domain of people. So, you have to choose a domain and you have to choose an interpretation and you are given a knowledge base. In our case, there is a knowledge base of small set of four sentences, which we say that an interpretation I, which is made up of a domain and a mapping is a model for the knowledge base, if all the statements in the knowledge base become true. So, a model is that interpretation, which is true for the theory as some people say. So, when we talk about knowledge base, some people use the word theory and this for people who like physics will ring a bell 
because you always have theories in physics and so on and then you have to go and validate does this theory hold in the real world is there quantum gravity is there uh, is the string theory able to explain the whole world how do you explain gravity now, all kinds of things people ask so when we talk about formal systems mathematics or physics as the case may be or logic we are talking about a theory and then we when you are talking about model is that can we find the real validation of our theory can we see somewhere in the real world that whatever we are saying in the theory is in fact true so that's the notion of a model very quickly we will not go into that so for our very small knowledge base remember there are two predicates o which is a binary predicate and m which is a unary predicate uh, let's look at two sample interpretations so you before you do that maybe you should take a pause and try to construct a interpretation for this sentence there are four sentences and just construct a world give a meaning to what is o and what is m and what are a b c d or a b c such that the statements become true essentially so we'll start off by looking at two models for this knowledge base so so take a moment and think about it and then move on to the video here is one model the knowledge base is given on the top or the theory is given on the top and the domain that we have chosen is a blocks world domain that's something that we have been talking about quite a bit in our course here the predicate o which is a binary predicate we will treat it as on in the blocks world okay we are familiar with that and the predicate m we will treat it as a color predicate that m of x is true if x is maroon in color so maroon m stands for maroon so we are talking about blocks which may be on top of each other and we are talking about colors of those blocks so now of course having chosen a domain which is this we have an interpretation and we know what we are talking about a b c are blocks in our case so what are we talking about we are saying that uh, a is on b that is the first statement in our knowledge base the second statement says that b is on c so we have this blocks world the third statement is saying that a is not maroon and the fourth statement is saying that c is maroon okay so now that we have created a domain and an interpretation it's clear to us what are we talking about what is the logic what is the knowledge base talking about but that comes only after you have pinned down a domain and an interpretation or domain and a mapping which is also called an interpretation so this is of course a model for the knowledge base that we have essentially can you think of another domain so the same set of sentences the four the same four sentences o a b o b c not m a and m c it could be talking about something entirely different so let's look at an example another example observe here that we have not said anything about what is the color of b essentially we have simply said a is not maroon we have said c is maroon and we have said that a is on b and b is on c that's all we have said about the world essentially here is another domain in this domain which is the domain of people now o stands for looking at it's a binary predicate remember which stands for a binary relation so if we say o a b it means a is looking at b and m let's say stands for married essentially Hmm. m of x means x is married essentially and we have three constants and uh, let's just give them human like names here uh, so a is jack and b is ann and c is john essentially hmm. now what are we talking about we are talking about a world in which the first ann is looking at john and is b and john is c so actually this is the second statement in our, in our logic what is shown in the picture that ann is looking at john is because o stands for looking at and b is ann so let me write it here 
P is M and John is C. So, obviously, Jack is going to be A and the first statement says that Jack is looking at B and B is N. So, Jack is looking at N. So, A, A maps to Jack, that is a mapping, B maps to N, C maps to John. Actually, I should point to the people, but uh, anyway, it is the same thing. And, and the other two statements are saying that A is not married, so we have written it here, A is not married and C is married. So, this is the same knowledge base with two different interpretations. I hope that drives home the point that logic is formal, that whatever you do with logic, the meaning is only in our heads essentially. So, one person could say that this is talking about the blocks world, another person could say that this is talking about people and in both cases all the four sentences are true in the world that we are describing. But that is not the reason why we are discussing this example. The re reason we are discussing this example is that reasoning is not always so simple. The questions that we are asking in the blocks world is if you look at the bottom of the slide that is there a non maroon block on a maroon block that is a question we are asking which if you are talking about people would be is a non married person looking at a married one essentially. So, here of course, the relation was on and here it is looking at, but this both are for the relation on essentially. So, that is our query, it is an existential query remember that uh, and we can write it as uh, an uh, existential query which is here. It says does there exist an x and does there exist a y such that O x y is true, O x y is true, not of m x is true and not of m y is true. Let us look at the block world, block, in blocks world we are saying are there two blocks x and y such that x is on y, x is not maroon and y is maroon. If we look at the people domain, the same query translates to are there two persons x and y such that x is looking at y and x is not married and y is married. So, is a not married person looking at a married one essentially, that is a query. So, the first thing I would like to ask you is about entailment is this sentence true? The second line here simply has it in an implicit quantifier form, but by now we are familiar with the fact that uh, that variables in, in queries are existential in nature essentially and the top sentence is explicitly ex existential. So, I have, I should have hidden that sentence before asking you. The question we want to ask is that is this sentence true or not. I have written here that it is clearly true. I have also put a question mark because it is not so straightforward to answer whether this query is true and uh, many people have conducted this test over a whole set of people and uh, very few people end up saying that yes, this sentence is true. Uh, Hardly anybody says it is false, but most people say that we cannot say, we cannot say, sorry, we cannot mistake. But the semantics is well defined and entailment is well defined. So, we should be able to say whether the sentence is true or not. And if you if you reason, if you if you give some thought to this, you will find that indeed this sentence is true. And the logic is not so hard, uh, it revolves if you can reason by cases and we do not have a proof method which can re reason by cases as of now. 
it really depends upon what whether Anne is married or not. There are two possibilities, Anne is married, then you know that Jack is looking at Anne and Jack is not married and Anne is married. So, therefore, a not married person is looking at a married person. On the other hand, it could be that Anne is not married. These are only two possibilities, either Anne is married or, or Anne is not married essentially. So, if Anne is not married, it turns out that because she is looking at John, the statement is again true. So, the statement that an unmarried person is looking at a married person is true in this knowledge base. Many people are not able to arrive at this conclusion, uh, specifically because while the statement is true, we do not know which married which unmarried person is looking at which married person, because we do not know whether Anne is married or not. But it turns out that irrespective of whether she is married or not, this statement is true. So, it is a true statement, which means if our logic is complete, we should be able to generate a proof for that essentially. It turns out that neither forward chaining nor backward chaining is able to generate a proof. You can try it for yourself. In fact, there is hardly any implication sentences there to chain over. Uh, and this is a very simple example which talks about the incompleteness of forward chaining and backward chaining. Does that mean that first order logic is incomplete? No. We have al already mentioned that Godel had shown almost a century ago, he had a provo he had a he had a theorem called the completeness theorem, which says that first order logic you can always construct, construct copy complete reasoning systems. He had a theorem called the incompleteness theorem, very famously known as the Godel's incompleteness theorem, but that was talking about second order logic essentially. First order logic is known to be both sound and complete, which is why it is a very powerful tool that we use almost everywhere in computer science, but it is not complete if you are talking about backward chaining or forward chaining. And this example is a counter example, it is see here is a problem that you cannot generate a proof for. So, these methods are not complete, but there exists complete methods uh, for theorem proving in first order logic, but we will uh, leave that for another time and hopefully some of you will come and join this course which is uh, called AI knowledge representation and reasoning and that will be offered in the next semester. So, with that uh, we will end our study of uh, deduction as such. Our goal here was so that while logical reasoning is a very important part of an agent's capabilities, underlying this logical reasoning is a search algorithm essentially. We saw two search algorithms forward chaining and backward chaining. Uh, but they turned out to be incomplete. There is another search algorithm called the resolution reputation method. Many of you must have studied this. It is complete for first order logic. I think. So, we have one more week left. In the next week, we will come back and look at an alternative way of representing problems, which is using constraints and these representations are called constraint satisfaction problems. And we want to have a quick look at that. The nice thing about constraint satisfaction problems is that you can flexibly combine search and reasoning together to solve a problem. The same problem you can solve entirely with search or you can solve entirely with reasoning. But of course, now we know that behind reasoning there is a underlying search algorithm, but nevertheless we like to think of uh, that as reasoning essentially. So, we will do that in the next week which will be the last week of the course.